Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna cover, oh, oof, almost dropped my pencil. I have a list of notes over here, but uh, I'll get right back to that, so yeah. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be covering uh, some 3D printing mistakes. I have a little piece of paper over here where it's written down just so I, I don't forget them because sometimes I trail off and tend to forget where I was going like I am right now. Anyways, uh, this is my top five things I've seen people do and uh, also things I get questions about quite a bit, believe it or not. Um, and some of these might be a little controversial in the 3D printing world, but honestly, I, I don't care. This is more aimed at the newer 3D printing people who have absolutely no idea what's going on. But uh, I'm gonna cover these. This is not in any specific order. So just take that as it is. But I'm gonna cover my first thing here, which is adjusting too many settings. So as everybody knows, on a 3D printer, you have a ton of settings you can go through in the slicer software. And of course, it depends on the slicer software you use, but basically they all do the same thing. They slice a file, create a G code, and it sends it to the printer for printing. There's one thing that I see a lot of people do, and that is adjust print settings they have no idea what they're doing with, or what no idea what they do. For instance, I've seen people adjust infill percentage and they have no idea what an infill percentage is, even though that's the simplest term to understand, right? Um, the one thing I want to let everybody know that's new to the 3D printing hobby, or even people who might have been doing it for a while, <clears throat> is uh, adjusting too many settings can lead to what I call the domino effect or the snowball effect, which is where you adjust too many settings, and this is especially for seasoned printers, people have been doing it for a long time. You adjust too many settings, you forget to go back and change one, and then you wonder why everything's messed up when you go to print. Um, and then the same can be said to a whole to people who are newer printing, uh, like one of my buddies, he just had issues with uh, bed adhesion. The one thing he didn't notice is he was printing at a layer height that was too small for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But with that, he tried every other setting changed in the book. He slowed it down, he printed it hotter, printed the nozzle hotter, printed the bed hotter, printed the bed cooler, tried turning temps down, speed down. At the end of the day, if he would have just looked at the layer height, it would have solved all his issues. But instead he went through every other issue, leaving the settings where they were, forgetting to go back and adjust them to where they were before he finally found the issue. I mean, he could have just texted me and I could have told him what was wrong in probably the first two minutes. Um, but that leads right into my, my next uh, thing for new printers and even seasoned printers really, is uh, using other print profiles without checking the settings they're using. So this happens to me a lot, and that is essentially you download a 3MF file, and a 3MF file has the, I don't wanna say the G code pre-slice, but it has just settings from your slicer preset, and it allows you to just basically slice the plate and go, and print it the same exact way the guy who created the profile did. The only issue with that is not everybody's settings work on every printer. And you know, even on Maker World, where I download a Bamboo Lab, uh, print profile doesn't mean that the settings from their P1S is going to match my P1S. Um, they could be tuned differently, calibration differently, they're different elevations, different temperatures. There's a lot of things that can affect how a 3D printer will print, even though it's an enclosed box with a thingy that moves fast, right? One thing that you always want to check when you download a print profile, layer height, the type of printer being used. A lot of the times I always download the A1 print profile when I should be downloading the P1S profile. Oops, I guess, and I usually throws me off because I get everything set and ready, and then I have to transfer the settings over, even though it's just a one button click, click, and you get it and you're done. It still is a pain when I forget that to do that. Um, there's another thing that I see a lot of people doing is changing the speeds or initial layer heights. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you, when it comes to every 3D printing I do, I use stock settings on just about everything, and it's kind of in between number one and two here, but. I never really change my settings. The only thing I change is like wall loops, infill type or infill percentage, and then maybe print by layer, maybe seam position to the back, and then whether or not supports are tree or tree or grid. But always double check your print. Always double check your print profiles. It will save you a lot of time, a lot of agony, and don't assume that everybody's print profile is the bee's knees is gonna work every time. It won't. Okay, just, just double check your settings. If anything is out of sorts and you don't know what to do, the best thing you can do 
is every little thing that you see changed in your slicer profile on Bamboo Lab, it's orange. Uh, click it, make it go back to normal and reset everything. I think you can actually go up into settings and reset all on any slicer, um, but don't forget to always, maybe once in a while, do that just to save yourself some heartache. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is too much maintenance or not enough maintenance. And there is a sweet spot, right? So for instance, the A1 Mini wants you to lube the rails, I swear, after like every two prints. If you were to actually do that, you would over lube it and then you would cause steps, steps to skip because there's no friction. Uh, or you'd have an excess of lubricant and then that can lead to more issues than fixing, especially on something that's moving as much as it is with as much dust that can be there. Uh, but whatever you do, do not do too much maintenance. You will know if you're doing too much maintenance. If you start to do too much maintenance, things start to break faster. Uh, for instance, on the P1S or the X1 Carbon, if you start doing a lot of nozzle swaps because you think your nozzle's bad, or you just want to take the nozzle out to clean it, or for whatever reason, clean the fan or something, you're more likely to damage the electrical connections long before you'll ever get the use out of the nozzle. So keep that in mind. And that goes for just about everything on any machine, whether it's your car, your truck, a plane or everything like doing too much maintenance can lead to the downfall of the device itself so just keep that in mind and also don't just neglect these things although they are meant to basically set and forget just don't ever see something like oh i should probably fix that no fix it probably immediately don't let things run along but uh most of the time i don't do maintenance on a machine until i notice something adverse uh, i don't just go do it willy-nilly because usually you're going down a rabbit hole that you won't be able to climb back out of. The next thing I'm gonna go, and these kind of the last two things are just some safety uh, tips that I have learned over the years. Um, not letting prints cool properly. This only really affects thinner profile prints, and I don't have anything here. Actually, this turkey's head fell off, but right here, this, uh, this flat piece right here, my wife dropped this earlier. This flat piece right here, the yellow to red transition, um, I had to wait for these to cool off the build plate and pop off the build plate themselves because when originally when I, when I printed one, I popped off the build plate and it warped and turned into a U. So just something to keep in mind, something to watch for, uh, let your prints cool properly. When you have larger, taller prints, it's not as big of a deal, but you could still warp the surface that it's printing on if you pull it off before it cools down. With that, of course, some of the beds, if you're printing ASA or ABS, the bed could be as hot as 100, 110 degrees Celsius which is very hot and will hurt you. So keep that in mind. Don't pull the build plate off unless you're ready to either burn yourself or destroy your print. But realistically, you shouldn't be pulling it off until it's cooled down just to make sure everything's proper. I don't necessarily follow that rule, but uh, it has damaged my build plates before. I've lost two because I pulled them off too soon and they warped when I flexed them and I couldn't get them to go back flat. Uh, which is probably a pretty rare instance, but it has happened to me. And then you could damage your print as well, which is never a, never, never a fun thing when you need a flat surface to glue or sand and it's not there anymore. And then the very last thing, which is number five, is uh, don't put things where they don't belong. And if you don't know what that means, you've probably put things where they don't belong. Um, one thing I've been guilty of, and it caused a very nice scratch down my entire arm is I stuck my arm into the P1S and I sliced it right up my arm uh, trying to grab a piece of purged filament that was on the build plate that wouldn't have affected the print at all but I just didn't like it being there and I learned the hard way that uh, these moving at say 60, 70, 80, 100, 200, 300 millimeters per second do not care where you are uh, they're going there so do not stick your hands anywhere near a print head on a printer uh, because you don't want to be like me and, and cut your arm open and then have blood all over your printer, which took hours to clean. As well as you don't want to stick your hand into anything that's moving on these printers in general. Uh, I have got my finger stuck in the <laughs> AMS, as, as embarrassing as that is, because it was pulling filament and I put my finger on the roller next to it and it pinched it and it just kind of hurt and it made me feel embarrassed. But also the belts and the linear rails on these machines are not meant to be touched. Uh, if you leave a residue on the belts, you're probably fine, but if you touch the linear rails, your oils getting onto those linear rails can actually cause rusting of some kind if you're not careful. That's why they tell you not to touch them or use gloves when you're doing them. Uh, your skin toxins don't really mix with the stainless steel or the galvanized steel on the uh, exposed rods. 
And a lot of people will tell you that too. There's dirt and dust and debris on your body. And if it gets into certain parts of the printer, it can ruin it. Uh, or at least cause you to do more maintenance than you want to do. But as for that, that's pretty much all the things that I would say people make mistakes with. If you have any mistakes that you've made in the past, put them down in the comments below uh, so other people can learn or laugh at them. And uh, hopefully you all like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you, this is probably going up on Wednesday, so I'll probably see you next Sunday. Thanks, everybody.